Why is it that little ones will sleep for hours upon hours on us, but as soon as you try to put them in their own bed, they only ever sleep for a short amount of time? It's mind boggling. Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm one of the sleep experts here at Little Ones. And we commonly get asked about catnapping and why little ones are only sleeping for a short amount of time around that three to five month age. In this video, I'm going to be answering your question. My three month old only ever sleeps for 30 minutes in their bassinet, but will sleep for hours on me. Why? First, we'll look at whether contact napping is good or bad. Next, we'll look at why your little one might be only sleeping for 30 minutes at a time. And finally, we'll have a look at some tips on how to get your little one to sleep for longer. Let's get into it. Is contact napping good or bad? It's really common for babies to love contact napping. They feel safe and secure from the warmth of your body, plus they can hear your heartbeat. These are all things that replicate what it's like being in the womb. So of course they're going to want to sleep for longer when they feel snug and secure. Contact napping has a lot of benefits and for some parents it works really well. My second child spent pretty much the first 10 weeks of her life contact napping with me. She slept better like that, she struggled a little bit with wind so being upright helped her, but also I had my hands full with another child who was two and a half and so for me it was just easier to contact nap to get the right sleep in. For some parents and carers though, Contact napping just isn't sustainable. They want to be able to put their little one down for their sleep in their own sleep space and know that they're going to sleep for the correct length of time. Once the four month regression hits, this is where contact napping can start to bring up some issues. If they're used to being close to you to settle to sleep and they need your presence to fall asleep, when they're waking overnight or when they're waking mid sleep cycle, they're going to rely on that parent presence to get them back to sleep. This is where we start moving towards self settling to sleep. By all means though, if contact napping is working for you and they're under four months of age, it's totally fine to contact nap with them. But if it is a bit of a concern or you're nearing the four month sleep regression, then you might start steering towards settling them to sleep in their own sleep space so that they get used to that and can start settling themselves to sleep there too. Why is your little one only ever sleeping for 30 minutes at a time in their bassinet? Around 30 minutes is when a baby starts to come out of their deep sleep cycle and if there's anything that's bothering them during their sleep, this is the time where it's actually going to cause them to wake fully because it's irritating them or it's bothering them. Some of the most common reasons are they are either undertired or overtired. Their awake periods during the day aren't quite optimal for their age. Their startle reflex has kicked in and this is jolting them awake. So we need to make sure that they're swaddled and feeling nice and snug and secure if they're not yet rolling. They're hungry or on the back of that, they're uncomfortable from wind or reflux. And finally, the big one, their sleep environment isn't quite supporting a long restful sleep. There might be unexpected noises, the room might be too bright, or if they were settled to sleep on you and then you've transferred them into their bassinet, they wake because their sleep environment has changed. They're no longer being held. They're no longer feeling secure with you. If you want to help your little one to sleep for longer than 30 minutes at a time, then I'd start by checking those usual culprits. Let's conquer catnapping. And how are we going to do that? Number one, set your baby up with a brilliant sleep environment. Nice and dark, with white noise, appropriate temperature, make sure they're feeling snug. Number two, follow the age appropriate awake times for your little one's age. They change rapidly from newborn to six months of age. So just make sure that you're keeping on top of that because what might have been working for them last week might not be enough awake time the following week. Number three, make sure your baby is nice and full going to sleep, but also well winded. Trapped wind is going to make them wake up. 
Number four, if your baby is under six months of age and they're waking, treat it like a night wake. So go in with the sole goal of resettling your baby back to sleep with minimal stimulation. Keep the room dark, keep the white noise going, focus on resettling them back to sleep, and this is going to help their body to learn to sleep for longer. Number five, from around four months of age, start guiding your little one towards self-settling at the start of their sleeps. Within our Little Ones app, we have many, many guides towards self-settling and you can choose which method is going to be best for you and your little one. You'll find that once your little one has the skill of self-settling to sleep at the start of their naps, if they happen to wake during their nap, they can probably resettle themselves back to sleep. If you can implement those five steps, you'll find that the cat napping will reduce. I hope you found this video really helpful. To summarize, we went over whether contact napping was a good or a bad thing. If it works for you, go for it. We also looked at why your little one might be waking at the 30 minute mark. And then we looked at what we can do to help extend their sleep for a little bit longer. If you want to know more about our program, you can head to our website, www.littleones.co. We've got tons of videos on our YouTube that will help to guide you towards the best sleep for your little one too. Have a great day and I'll chat to you again soon. Bye.